welcome to another video episode of my podcast. My name is Cheryl, and I call this podcast Cappuccino Crafts um, because I can't function without my morning uh, latte that I usually make at home. I don't usually go out for morning coffee. Um, or out for coffee in general. It's usually kind of a special event if I do that. But anyway, I depend on my morning latte uh, for life. Yeah. And also, I am really enjoying tea this year and exploring uh, teas. And um, so, yeah, enjoying those. That's how I name my podcast. And thank you for choosing to watch this video and spend a little of your time with me. Um, I appreciate that so much because there's so many fun things to do and so many good podcasts and uh, videos out there on the internet and on YouTube. So, um, yeah. Yeah, thank you for watching. And uh, the crafts that I enjoy our knitting primarily but also crochet here and there um and yeah i also enjoy watching uh, crafty yarny podcasts on youtube while i craft um so let's have some crafty chat time together um please uh Get yourself a beverage of your choice, any kind of beverage that you like. And if you're a little bit hungry, maybe a little snack. That's good, too. Um, and grab your yarn, your hook, your needles, your drop spindle, whatever you need. And um, let's get going. Um, in crafting this week, I am making progress on my Mercury Socks. Here they are, both of them, and I, last week I said that it wasn't regular striping and I thought that this was one of the Patton's Cry FX colorways, because the FX colorways are really different, um, but actually this is a regular striping colorway, and um, I even managed accidentally to have stripes that are matching on both socks which doesn't happen that often um i have planned matching stripes a few times but i generally don't really bother about whether my stripes match or not it doesn't make a difference to me um but yeah, the yarn is knitting up a little differently than I thought, but I like it a lot. Um, this is, like I said, uh, turning out to be a regular striping colorway, even though the base, before it was dyed, is two colors uh, spun together or marled. Um, they had strands of cream and strands of brown, and they spun them together to um, make kind of like a barber pole of cream and brown and then from what from how it's knitting up it looks like once they had that cream and brown um, spun together then they dyed stripes onto that yeah so I do really like Patton's Croy yarn I think it's a great durable um, workhorse sock yarn and fun to knit with i know not everybody likes it it's not the softest um but i really i really like it and if you don't need the super soft sock yarn then and you have patents croy available where you are then i think it's a good option and and they wear very well so those are the socks oh before that this it is the mercury sock pattern which is available on ravelry as a free pdf download and i'm really enjoying the pattern it's a really easy lace i already have it memorized um 
if you have knit a pair or two of socks before, so you kind of have your mind wrapped around how to do a sock, but you've never done lace before and you're curious to try a first lace project, I think that this lace would be a very good first lace pattern uh, because it's very, very straightforward, very simple. And in the pattern, even though it's a free pattern, it's well put together and she gives you written instructions as well as a chart. And I, I personally love charts for lace and cables, um, but I know charts aren't for everybody and they don't work for everybody. Um, so whatever kind of directions you need, whether um, you need a chart or whether you need written instructions, either way, it's there for you. It's a very accessible pattern. Um, and I recommend it. Um, yeah. So that's my experience so far with this pattern, and I really like it. I like that the lace is so simple, but you have to concentrate just a little bit to keep track of where you are, even if you have it memorized. So you have to concentrate just enough that if you're trying to focus and trying to keep away thoughts about... Um, situations that are bothering you or intrusive thoughts that just keep coming back. Um, you have to focus enough to keep those away, but you don't have to focus so hard that it becomes difficult or stressful in its own way. It's just the perfect level, um, I think, for very very focused and calming knitting, which is fantastic. Also, I am making progress on my boxy sweater, which is a very, very oversized pullover designed by Hohi Locatelli. And... The last time I tried to record this, because <laughs> it had some technical difficulties, I held this up and some of the stitches came off the needle. <laughs> it's going to be okay. Um, once I finished recording, I'm going to go back and uh, secure those. But yeah, that's why I'm not knitting on it right now. Otherwise, I would be knitting and chatting with you. Uh, yeah, but it's been that kind of a day. And that kind of a week. <laughs> yeah, it has not been an easy week for me. Um, I take care of both of my parents. We live in this house um, that my we moved in to, together as a family like 35 years ago or so. Um, I take care of them now. Um, and some things have been happening with them that have been not not easy and um, I've had some anxiety <laughs> a lot of anxiety this week but uh, things are stabilizing and feeling better today um, so yeah anyway so that's the crafting. I'm only working on those two projects. The only other project that I have in progress is a, a long-term like background project of a scrappy blanket I'm doing in crochet. I'm doing the granny stitch stripes, uh, stripes of scraps. And I'm not touching that blanket till the weather gets cold. It is too hot to work on that monster. I do not want it sitting in my lap. Nah, uh So, my sweet spot for number of projects 
in progress at a time is between two and four. And I don't count long term like background scrappy projects. They don't count in that number. Um, but what works for me is between two and four active projects. Any more than that and I get very anxious and I get very frustrated because it feels like nothing's ever going to be finished ever. Um, but I know people manage their projects and people craft very differently. So it's different for all of us. Um, so I wonder, what is your number of projects um, where you like to be? Um, how, yeah, what's your perfect number or your sweet spot um, for managing your projects? And are any of you, anybody watching, are any of you a monogamous knitter that really only does one project at a time uh, to focus on finishing those projects? Um, yeah, that'd be interesting to talk about in the comment section. So if you feel like it, um, talk about that in the comments. Um, but I think this is the end of the crafty section. And let's move on to books. I am making progress on my two uh, paperback books that I'm reading. They are both by Peter S. Beagle who I really like, and I just got the idea to do one new Peter S. Spiegel book that I've never read with my favorite Peter S. Spiegel book, which is, my favorite is The Last Unicorn. And the one that I'm reading alongside it is Summer Long, which is a brand new uh, book to me. Making progress on those, enjoying both of them. Uh... And last week, I mentioned that I could not guess. The story of Summer Long, one of the characters is a mythological creature or person in hiding as a human. And I said last week, I really don't know her true identity. I can't, I can't figure it out yet. Um... I do have a guess now. It came to my mind, um, and I it's possible she's Persephone, but I don't know if I'm right, and I don't know how much longer, uh, I don't know when he is going to reveal that. I'm really curious. I hope it's not all the way till the end. I'd like to know before the book finishes. I mean, I'd like I think maybe in the middle is a, a good place to reveal that. But uh, my guess right now is possibly she's Persephone. And we'll see if I'm right. Um, yeah. I do have two audiobooks going, but I haven't listened to either of them in uh, several weeks. I hope to get back to them maybe this week. Maybe instead of watching YouTube, I'll be listening while I'm knitting. We'll see. But um, I do have two audiobooks going uh, that I want to get back to. That's the reading. That went pretty quick. Um, and now I have a cooking story to tell you. Yeah, I know. I don't always talk about cooking here. Um, but I was watching an episode of a, uh, cooking competition with, um, very, uh, very keen home cooks that specialize in, um, uh, different cuisines pitted against a chef from a prestigious restaurant from that same cuisine. And this episode was uh, Chinese food was the theme. Uh, and they were all cooking whole fish. And that night I knew I had salmon in the fridge that I um, 
really wanted to cook, but I didn't have any interesting idea what to do with it other than our very routine and kind of boring uh, lemon and butter and garlic and that kind of thing with maybe a little dill or maybe a little lemon but lemon pepper maybe but I just was a little bit bored even though I love salmon and here in the Pacific Northwest we love our salmon <laughs> we do and um this was had been on sale which is why I got it it was wild Alaskan salmon beautiful the color was such a beautiful red pinky red beautiful color wild Alaskan salmon on a really good sale at our grocery store so I could not leave it behind and I got a nice big piece but I was still very bored with no I, no interesting idea what to do with it that would be um, just out of our routine. So I watched this episode and my brain just started firing. I was like, wow, we like Asian food, my, my parents and I, and we have Asian ingredients in the kitchen. Uh, we keep around because we, we like to, to cook with those. So I started thinking about all the ingredients that I had in the kitchen to make a marinade. And I'm like, I'm going to marinate this fish and then wrap it in foil and bake it. So I was ex so excited and I went to the kitchen and I, I had the best time. I had so much fun and I haven't had fun in the kitchen for weeks because summer isn't my favorite season for cooking. It's just warm and hot and I don't want to be in the kitchen with hot stove or hot oven. And it's, I'm not inspired in the summer about cooking. So it's been a long time since I've had fun in the kitchen. But I was having a great time. I was so excited making a marinade, chopping garlic, putting our favorite Asian ingredients together, soy sauce and mirin. And um, I decided for a twist to put a little bit of orange juice in there and uh, sesame oil. And anyway, so I put that beautiful salmon on a big sheet of foil, put poured the marinade on it, sealed it up like a beautiful gift and put it in the fridge to marinate and I let it marinate and then um, after a while I started the rice and I thought well I'll put mirin and a splash of orange juice in the water for the rice too we're gonna zhuzh this up and make it really good and of course I put salt in the rice because I always put salt in the water for the steamed rice yeah so I've got the rice on and the fish in the oven and the first sign of trouble was that I saw that <clears throat> after about eight minutes of uh, cooking the rice was too dry the liquid was disappearing too fast and I was using a different pot one that was smaller at the bottom but taller the rice that I, the pot that I've been using for years is wider, and so I didn't get the water far enough above the rice because I didn't use a measuring cup to measure. Oh no! I know I do measure the rice with a measuring cup, but I don't ever do that with the liquid. I just kind of fill it up above the rice a certain amount. I uh, make sure I put my finger down in there to make sure it comes um, to just before my first knuckle. And, and I know that the level is right for the liquid. But in this um, taller pot with a smaller bottom, it was not the right ratio. <laughs> 
and yeah that's a problem I knew the only hope was to add more water to attempt to save the rice so I did I put more water in there and hope for the best and I was still really excited for the fish um, everything came out everything finished cooking made plates and I was still I knew the rice wasn't going to be good, but I hoped it was going to be okay. And I was just still really it, so happy about the fish. I took a photo of my plate. I was, not that it was gorgeous. It was not, it was not like an Instagram plate in any way, but I thought if this experiment turns out really good and I want to keep making this marinade, I want to remember this, this, plate so I did I took a photo I'll put the photo at the end of the video in my little slideshow so that you can laugh <laughs> so you can laugh but um yeah the marinade was not right I did not put enough soy sauce I was very very careful with the soy sauce because I wanted to taste the orange juice and I wanted to taste the mirin and soy sauce is so strong. If you are for a marinade or for stir fry, if you overdo the soy sauce, that's the only flavor. It will cover everything if you overdo it. So I, I was way too careful with the soy sauce. And none of the other flavors came through either. I couldn't taste anything. Not even the garlic nothing it was the blandest zero flavor fish I'd ever put in my mouth it was so sad the only good thing was that it was not overcooked and dried out the texture was still fine um, it was flaky it had moisture but it had zero flavor the only flavorful thing on that plate was the canned green beans that I heated up <laughs> to go with everything. And canned green beans do not are not a flavor bomb. No. If you've ever eaten canned vegetables, they are not a flavor bomb. Mm -mm. No. The rice was horrid. I added the water, but it was uh, between adding it in the middle of cooking and adding too much it just turned to a yucky mush it was a yucky mush with again no flavor it was more bland than the fish it was terrible it's funny to me now <laughs> At, when I was eating it, it was not funny. What is weird about it is that I had, had the most fun cooking. Until I had the plate and was putting the fork in my mouth and tasting the food. It was the most fun ever. I loved cooking this meal. Eating this meal was punishment <laughs> yeah and my mom was so sweet mom she is the least picky eater person ever so she was like no it tastes fine it tastes fine it's good she's so sweet <laughs> bless her but it was every bit of horrible Anyway, we did keep some leftover fish because it was a big slab that I bought. We rescued the leftover fish by putting soy sauce on it when I heated it up. And then on the plate on top uh, to serve it, I put huasin sauce on the top. That rescued the fish. With some soy sauce and huasin sauce, it had flavor and was still moist. And as a leftover, it was fine. 
but I threw the rest of that rice out in the trash where it belonged. Yeah. So that is my cooking story. If you cooked this week, um, I hope anything that you cooked turned out 10 times better and was a complete success. I, I do. I hope you ate some really good food this week. I did eat some pretty tasty food this week, but uh, not that. And I that was the worst thing I've tried to eat in a long, long time. So, I think we've come about to the end. There's only one more thing that I could tell you about, or that I want to tell you about. And that is um, between earlier attempts at recording that, as I said, there were technical difficulties between that last recording attempt and between now, uh, we had a little bit of uh, drama and excitement in our neighborhood. And our neighborhood is very low drama and very calm and quiet neighborhood. But the SWAT team... Our county SWAT team came to the house right next to us on the right side and did a raid. There was a SWAT raid at the house next door with um, a lot of police vehicles and Kevlar vests and the whole... I, the whole thing um yeah my parents our family my parents brought us to this house they bought this house about 35 years ago and I don't believe anything like that has happened ever in our neighborhood to my knowledge or our whole development um yeah, now I haven't lived here this whole 35 years. <laughs> I was gone for uh, a good few years of that, at least 10 years, but I don't think that's happened that I've ever heard of. So it was really a huge surprise and um, the neighbors, uh, a few neighbors gathered in the driveway. Mom and I went across the driveway across the street from us, and we were chatting with our very friendly neighbors who really look out for us. They are the best neighbors. I do have to say, we have some awesome neighbors in our neighborhood that are really great. Um, and I love our neighbors. And so we were in the driveway across the street talking with, uh, uh, our, some, a couple of our favorite neighbors and it was like, wow. <laughs> um, yeah. But thankfully there were, there was no shootout or any of that kind of situation. Um, I think it went down pretty, uh, quietly that way. Thank God. Um, but there, there were, there was no gunfire at all. Thank God, thank God. That was our first thought. Ugh. Um, and yeah, sorry. I'm thinking about whether I should talk about guns or not. I'm deciding not to. Although I will say just this. Um, there's no excuse for having assault rifles in civilian hands. I will say that. That's as far as I'll go. Um, and we need to do something. Anyway. Yeah. And that's an end to that talk. But, um... Anyway, and I think that's an end to this episode, too. If you're still with me. 
Anyway, so I hope you have a very good week this coming week. I hope all your creative projects uh, go successfully and are a lot of fun. I hope you eat some delicious food this week coming up and that you are family and you are well. And if you have any pets, I hope your pets are well because we love our pets so much. They're family too. And yeah, so... Take care and see you next time. Bye-bye.